What's up, everybody? It's been a long time since we've all been together, but it's our lucky day because now we're back here in the brand new and improved Riot Games Arena, and it's time to kick off yet another season of the LCS. And what better way to do such a kickoff for such a season than with the brand new analyst desk waiting room area starring four of my favorite people. Hey. It's Jat, it's Mark, it's Raz, it's Emily. It starts now. Woo! All right. It's us. We've done it. We got new toys. New carpet. We can't show all of it now. But they did renovate the space while we were gone. During Worlds, actually. You can see they were renovating. But anyway, how was Mark? You, you have the biggest news of everyone. I yeah, I think everyone had a good break, but I think I win because I got engaged. So Woo! top that. I dare you all. Yeah. OK, Raz, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Oh god, I got engaged with my McDonald's meal every night. <laughs> I was a slob the entire way. <laughs> Living your best life though. Yeah. Hey, Twitch yeah. kept me comfortable, thank God. Wow. Yeah. How'd it go, Emily? I got nothing. I mean I visited my family. I yeah. played a lot of Persona 5 Royal. Oh. And that's about okay. it. Yeah. For real though, I've been a, a breeb, a British weeb. I've been watching a lot of English <laughs> Premier League since the World Cup. And your team? I'm a bit of a bandwagoner, I'm Arsenal. <laughs> All right, look, there we go. Look, my parents were Thierry Henry fans, so I'm sticking through. I am not a bandwagoner, I promise, please. Yeah, we have, we have a lot of LCS stuff to talk about. So many teams switching rosters. 23 of the 50 starting players from 2022 summer split returns, so 27 changes. But we also have to shout out some familiar talent faces that we won't be seeing Mm -hmm. in this area, this split. Freak uh, is giving Caitlin Mana on the balance team. <laughs> Buffing 80 carries, up? changing crit rates. Every yeah. Yeah. Dash is actually going to be having a new show that he is filming next weekend, I believe. And Pastry Time, I haven't seen him around. He's gone. Yeah. Hello? He just disappeared, I think. Yeah. I don't know. Hi. Whatever yeah. happened to him? Can anyone? Hey. Yeah, I'm sure he'll turn up Sometimes somewhere. Sometimes it's like I can still hear his voice. Can you guys you know? not like, hear me? I hope yeah. we see him again, though. I liked him a lot. Oh, yeah, he's, he's a good, good guy. Cool guy. Yeah. I had a lot of content ideas. Really good casting um, synergy with Mark dude. back in the day. Anyways, uh, we're going to start waiting room right now. And Emily, I know you've been watching a lot of LPL yeah. LCK in the offseason. All right. So I pulled a few champions I've seen from other leagues. And my question to all of you when you see what the champion is, is who do you in the LCS want to play that champion, right? Because we've seen a lot of really okay. interesting things. Uh, we've seen a lot of very standardized things over in LCK. However, we've also seen weird things like Caitlyn support yes. just last night. Uh, Jin support played both there and in the LEC. And then the first champion I'm going to say is Elise, which was played by Canyon in the LCK, okay. uh, was played by Karsa in the LPL, and then also has just been played a lot more generally in the LCK as well. So who in the LCS do you guys want to see play Elise? Do I, I'm, I'm you raised your hand first. first. Yeah. There you go. Speak up. Oh, yeah, Ooh, took mine. Because he has, he already has a bunch of LCK players on his team. Yeah. So it's an easy transition. He also loves early ganking junglers like Rek'Sai back in the day. And if it's viable, I think he'll be good at it. I was going to say Santorum because he played back when that was meta. Like, Elise has been out of the meta forever. And yeah, so when true. you said speak, I was like, has he played this champ? Does he know what it does? Like, I'm sure he knows the buttons. <laughs> yeah. I would He's go, got six whole buttons. I would go Pyotic simply because Ooh. we're going top lane anyways. <laughs> Level three <laughs> die for Summit. I feel like that's the clear Some strategy. Connecting Elise coming in? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, nice. Uh, so, I mean, I, I really like Elise. I think she has some obvious drawbacks, <laughs> uh, but I do really also love early ganking junglers and the jungle has changed a lot going in. Next champ I'm going to pull up is Heretics Ruby playing Cassiopeia. This was picked directly into uh, the Rise. It's not something we've seen a ton, but mm -hmm. I thought it was an interesting pick. And now that, uh, you know, PoE is not on the team in the LCS anymore, we don't have an easy catch. Where's Niski? Where's Niski? Yeah, yeah where's I was you? wondering, like, who, if anyone, would you want to see play Cassiopeia? That's a tough Is one. it lame if I say Bjerg? Yes, just, it is. Yeah, it is. No, go for it anyway. Well, I'm going to say it anyways, just because, I, I don't know, the standard control mage, like, he's the staple control mage player of the LCS. So it would be fitting okay. in his hands. I have one, but it's really I, tough. I feel like I'm jumping at the I bit. would go for uh, for a Blaze Olive, actually. Because oh, as okay. a player, he's, he's somebody that tends to try and look for other counters. Like, he is a great control mage player as well. And I think this change actually helps him quite uh, greatly. If that's the style he's still going for. He says he wants to play aggressively from like the content shoots that we've seen. So maybe that's not his style currently, but that's something that he's been successful in the past with. Yeah, I have mine as Harry, T TL's new mid laner, who's mm -hmm. been spending two years on the Team Liquid Academy system winning Proving Grounds. I think he's 
down for counter picks, and I think if he plays it into rise, he's going to succeed. He's a skill check champ a little bit. Too. Absolutely, like you have to have good hands if you're going to. He's play, down for skill checking. Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Do you have one? Uh, you have all I, the champions, I didn't but what are your picks? Easy one. My least one was Blabber though, because I was okay. like, oh, yeah. I think oh, it's yeah, really yeah. cool he's to see like Blabber all over the map really <laughs> that makes early sense. with Elise. Uh, the last one I have is Cassidyn. Um, the clip I pulled was from FPX's Care, playing it over in the first week of the LPL, but it also has been played a lot and banned a lot. Um, and banned more than played in places like LCK. Um, but we've also seen it in ERLs, we've seen it in LEC, I believe. Uh, so yeah, who would you want to play Cassidyn? Because I actually think this champ, again, not something you want to blind necessarily, but uh, is very powerful. I would go Jensen. I think as a team, they will want to play around mid lane, kind of go back to what he was great for, OG Cloud9 wa double mm. wards on both <laughs> sides of his mid lane and try and pool resources into him and get him counter pick. I think that would be probably the perfect champion for him in the meta. I was going to say Vikla, just because it doesn't, he's kind of crazy and like yeah. Cassidy yeah. want to scale a little bit more, but I like when people play Cassidy and aggro as soon as they hit level six, start going on the map and uh, he's LCK, you know, homebred. So if he's showing up in the LCK, yeah. you know, he's probably pretty comfortable with it. I'm playing a long game. I want to see Po Belter play it. Oh, that is a very yeah, long so you're, game. You're predicting yeah, yeah. he's so long and benched. Uh -huh. po po For some reason, Po Belter doesn't have an LCS team. He's streaming a lot. The I saw him out. play Cassidyn. He was doing great on it. Someone's going to underperform. Whose job is he take, Jack, since you're calling your shot? Oh, no. Whoa. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Day one, day one. Day one. Day one. Day one. Don't answer that. We're not uh, answering TSM that. TSM Po Belter. <laughs> I don't oh, know. I don't know, man. But I'd be down for that. That's a good call out and uh, for right. Cassidy and players, period. Yeah, let's, let's, let's answer this one, though. Who wins the split? It's also tagging Bwipo and Cutie Cinderella. We're going to have Cutie Cinderella on in just a few minutes, but uh, we, did, we did power rankings. Yes, we did. Yeah, yeah. I guess we will answer this. I did a problem. JLXP power ranking. Mark did a blame game and a dive power yeah, ranking. Wow. Just recycle content. That's the same. I haven't, <laughs> seen, right <laughs> I haven't seen Raz and Emily's power rankings. Well, I, I'm curious about theirs, actually. Yeah. Pop it up if we can. Oh, I, okay. I yeah, see them over on the big screen. Oh. I think this is the first time I've ever seen Emily actually do a power ranking. Because you feel like they're so close. Oh, God. They, it's from years of having to do ESPN world, like global <laughs> power rankings. I just have, you know, PTSD around power rankings. All right. Eight, nine, ten. Full agreement. Yeah, Jad are pretty Six, close. Six, seven, also full agreement, and one through five also. So there's the one through five line are all the same five teams yeah. in a specific order. Then six through eight, then nine through ten. But yeah, the biggest difference we have though is the FlyQuest place. FlyQuest, and yeah. Cloud9 FlyQuest is in literally every spot. One, two, three, four. I guess they weren't quite five, so I guess there's a little bit of hope for them. The C9 is also very have FlyQuest out. is first. And remember, this is just for the regular yeah. season. We're not taking into consideration playoffs. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah, this this is a That's power important. ranking, not who wins the split. It's who has the best record at the end of the double round robin 18 game regular season. But Mark, when I saw you have FlyQuest first, that was I don't know what it was, but I'm like, what? You, you immediately DM me you're like first? You're smoking, and I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> but now the fans have them first? Yeah, it's is it because you brainwash the fans? No, it's because it's that. just they, you run on hype. You don't think the dive aggregate had no them thoughts. first, right? Uh, I think cumulatively, yes, but that was because me and the fans. I think Kobe or Azale had them first as well. Okay. For the people okay. that don't watch, like, hours and hours of preseason content, why do you have FlyQuest first? Okay, so if you're not familiar, they have brought in just an incredible lineup. All yeah. five from last year are gone. They've brought in just two amazing carries from the LCK and Vikla and Prince. They got Impact, who's one of the best top laners of all time in the LCS. Spika, former MVP on a new team. And Ayla, who's not here today, was arguably the best academy support prospect. So I think there's so many things mm -hmm. to be excited about. All five positions, you have a really compelling story. I do have to check. Do you remember who won the last split of the LCS? And this is for both Emily and Mark. a good question. I don't yeah. live in the past yet. You live in the past, you die in the past. Because <laughs> <laughs> you have them fifth. That's the biggest difference to me. I have Cloud... Raz, you and I have Cloud9 second. Yes, we do. Emily's on with me. Yeah. Fifth. I... Fifth. Yeah. Why, oh. why are you so hot on C9, you two? They won the split. They won the split and made <laughs> a single change. It's a new time. And I feel like for FlyQuest, the biggest change that I want to see, if it works or not, is Vikla and Spika working together as a mm. 2v2. I feel like that's the most important duo to have, and that's going to take time. And now we, you know, Winsome coming in too. We'll talk about that a little later. That's going to take even more time to work on. I'm... So I think you guys are crazy. And thankfully, I think we had a bit of a discussion about putting your money where your mouth is. Because if you have that much faith in FlyQuest... I have the most faith. I will yeah. bet anyone here that they perform better than C9. End, end of the split, not exactly first, second, but like C, FlyQuest will finish over C9. I can confidently okay. take yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right. well, you're, 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 you're like a third. Yeah. That's like a pretty quick confidence, together. but...
Yeah. All right, it's regular season. Yeah. yeah. We're yeah. agreeing based on yeah, yeah. this. Community service to go with the fly quest message of positivity. I what like would the this. tree quest? I, I, I do like trees? that. I, I also would challenge like the Cloud9 social team, just like what does Cloud9 stand for? Because I almost want like we'll do community service oh. and FlyQuest wins. Oh, but, like, yeah, what does Cloud9 want? You oh, to I do? like. Okay, that. but it has to be like, comparable yeah. to community. Sure, yeah, sure, yeah, sure, absolutely. Like... But I want to see. I, I, I need to figure out what Cloud9 stands for. We stand problem... for offshore oil drilling. Yeah, <laughs> like, I know. Like, we're, 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 like, start littering everywhere. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Honestly, looking at the social media for Cloud9, they stand for chaos and memes. So I'm I'm pretty yeah, scared. Yeah, they're gonna see what Portillo does. It's gonna mess with us. Yeah. Guys, to us, Mateus, please. I wait with with uh, bated breath for that one. It's also time to welcome in our special guest for Waiting Room, Cootie Cinderella, long-time LCS fan, host of the best award show on Twitch that I've seen. <laughs> oh, welcome, <laughs> welcome, welcome. Not the best one, just one he's seen. How many have you <laughs> watched yet? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> well, hello, I'm so excited to be here. Nervous, I threw up like four times. What? So. <laughs> yeah, no, you're gonna be you be your record, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, wow. This is this is crazy. Hi guys, look, yeah, I'm hello. sitting here. This right is here, crazy. You've done it. How long have you been I've watching LCS? It. Um, wow, I've been watching LCS for about eight years. Um, okay. People don't realize yeah. they don't realize the reason I had to pivot away from like streaming League of Legends or mm -hmm. kind of being a part of the community was because. Um, uh, well, I get bullied a lot because I'm, um, I'm stuck in silver. Um, uh, right now I'm bronze three. Okay. <laughs> no shame here. <laughs> you, so you finished so, your rankings for 2018? Yeah, I did. I already did. I tried not to. I was like, oh, I can hold off. Um, but no, it didn't work. So I'm bronze three. I'm really proud of it though. Um, <laughs> did you duo with anybody? No. Like well, share the pain? Yeah. Well, I have I have a friend that I duo with all the time, and so it's really his fault. Yeah, it makes sense. Nice. About it. Yeah. Because yeah. um, if I played without him, I'm sure I would be in plat by Dead now. Dead ankle weights on. Yeah. 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 But I'm just trying to be nice by playing with him and also trying to be relatable to the other LCS fans. Like, you could be here too someday. No matter your skill. <laughs> you have the most relatable <laughs> gameplay You can still love it. I do. I do have really relatable gameplay. I, you know, I've recently, this is huge for me, I've turned off all chat. Good nice call. Yeah, you You're a tilter? This, no, I wouldn't say that. I send nice messages with smiley faces. And so and they're not, they're yeah. not passive aggressive. They are nice. I send passive with smiley faces. <laughs> yeah, what you don't know is everyone else has also turned all chat off. So yeah. your smiley faces just fall on deaf ears. Uh, no, uh, yeah, it's off now. It's off, and this is this is my season of gold for sure. All right, what are you most excited for uh, in LCS? There were so many changes in the offseason. What are you uh, I, listen, I'm an old, like, I'm the girl that cried when Dyrus retired. Like, I'm that girl, so mm -hmm. seeing... Bjergsen and Doublelift on the same team again. I'm very excited for that. I'm back in. I'm seeing Doublelift come back is is so exciting for me. He was like, he was like my idol back in the day. Like I had mm -hmm. a jersey. I had like, I'd show up to his meet and greets, everything like that. And I was an ADC main, so so it's really nice. cool to see him playing again. I was Wait, really I'm excited. also an ADC. Main. Yay! There you go. Well, if you have any tips, um, <laughs> I'll share with you <laughs> if you want. Um, apparently, you are supposed to ward. I learned that. You should yes. use your wards. <laughs> new. Eight years, you got it. Yeah, yeah. it's a new thing for me. But uh, I heard you have something special planned for broadcast. Some sort, some sort of ranking that you brought of your own? I did. I did. A lot of people, like, I think, so I'm part of, like, the just chatting area of yeah, video yeah. gaming. <laughs> um, and so a lot of those streamers they they try to play league of legends or even some of my friends they have played league of legends so i just wanted to rank them officially while we're here mm -hmm. because i think it's important that everybody knows how my friends are at this game as well call okay. them out nice. yeah, yeah. 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 Um, actually i'd love this yeah really she's gonna tell us <laughs> where they need to go <laughs> yes. for this okay I believe. Oh, she all right somewhere yeah, yeah where is it I, we have a telestrator back here we also have a lot of other big screens oh. there's so many screens we don't know where to but it's just it. on camera so just tell us what's, what's yeah. on the screen here. so obviously uh s tier <laughs> s tier we oh, have yes, myself i am better than all of my friends i do wonder what your ranking system is because really? i see double lift is yeah. a d <laughs> yeah and you just said your bronze as an s so well, what's the what's the you know here? sometimes it's more about the player's heart is what I've always said <laughs> and I think I've got the biggest heart in the game um, and I have the biggest tenacity uh, I've been around f for years and I just keep trying no matter what I feel like double lift doesn't try that hard anymore um, there it is <laughs> we we played a game together um, with last last split we yeah. played with the Grubhub um, and he just oh, yeah. didn't he wasn't that good so I don't get it <laughs> I don't get the hype yeah, he I didn't really win don't. That game, did he? Yeah. Why is Tyler one as an A? 
Um, well, Tyler One was on, he supported me um, at the same time we played that game. He was my support and he was awful. He was <laughs> really mean. Um, and so I just. Yeah, that's his brand. That's I that's just, actually I'm not surprised. Just want to say that, like, I am S because I wasn't mean back. And so it's all about the heart, like I said. Even though he said that I wasn't very good, um, he didn't mean it. So. Hey, I would challenge the double with one because I feel like. The best showcase of love is trolling your friends. No. Literally running Tough, tough, tough love. Yeah. yeah. No. Exactly. You just gotta keep it real. Yeah. You know, and I just, well, at the end of the day, if I'm looking at like ADCs, I'm just better than him. <laughs> oh, there we go. So that too. I think people I see don't Atriox. Talk about is that Atriox them. down there as that well? That is Atriox. He's awful. He's really bad. He, he slept Who on my this couch. Twitch is good other than yourself. Before he like broke well. into the, the Twitch scene as like more of a content creator, uh -huh. he slept on my couch one time like really? eight years ago. Yeah, biggest mistake of my life. Yeah, I'm Letting so sorry. My home. Atrock is really, really bad at the video game. He <laughs> says that he used to be like plat and diamond, whatever. He, I've played many games with him and I only went down. And uh, so yeah. that's huge. Sounds, that's a good call out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a it's warning huge. for people out there if they want to do it with them. Everyone's like, oh, cutie, how'd you get in bronze? You must have been carried. And I'm like, no. I was I was dropped down there because of Atriox. He you threw me in there. Yeah, I was carried. pulled down. I belong in silver. Uh, Maya, my friend, she's never played League, but there's lots of birds in it. So I think she would just be good naturally. <laughs> she could play Anivia and figure yeah, it out. Yeah, she'd play Anivia and she'd go, like, she'd do really great. Uh, Lily Pichu is amazing. Quarter Jade, this was crazy. She just started playing League, just barely. Yeah. She's already in gold. Prodigy. So she's an S. Better than Tyler if she just applied herself. Um, Tyler has played an insane number yeah. of games too. It's taken him time to get there. Yeah. Thousands, yes. Yeah. But Quarter Jade's just better. All right. Probably, Tyler's probably played more games than any human in North America, but <laughs> maybe one day he can make it to, to S on your tier list. Uh, yeah. You're going to be with us all day on yeah, and off. I am. What do you have planned for the rest of the broadcast? Oh, tons of stuff. You don't even know. I started today. I got the goss. I learned about Blabber's first kiss. It was a big deal. Wait, oh, you know you're mad. Because I haven't heard this. Well, you better get your own goss. That's all I'm saying. Uh, so, not enough research. <laughs> yeah. Well, if, if they win, we'll have to ask them in the post-game interview or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Cinderella I'm just going to keep doing that. I'm just going to keep getting the tea. I learned Fudge doesn't swear, actually. He hates swearing. That's why his name is Fudge. He that's, sweared on stage. Well, he's working too. on it. Whoa. <laughs> 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 he's working on it. That's why his name is Fudge. He doesn't even like Fudge. I asked him if he knew how to make Fudge. He doesn't. So... Ooh. He's fraudulent. Okay, He's fraudulent. thank you, Cootie Cinderella. You're we'll welcome. see you. Yeah, we're gonna see you later on in the broadcast. That is going to do it for the waiting room portion. She's gone. Bye. This is gonna be the schedule for today. Cloud 900 Thieves is up first. We'll see if Double can climb out of D tier. EGGG, TL Honda versus FlyQuest, and then COG Dig and Immortals TSM to close out the day. Rematch of Summer Finals up first. Rematch of Summer yep. Finals looks dope. Team Liquid versus FlyQuest. That is our also circle that one on your calendar. Yes. There's there's so many good games today. All right. You already stole mine. Actually, yeah, the one, that one's you. definitely the one I wanted to watch the most. I think even just seeing, um, I'm interested in seeing IMT personally, just because I want to see where, like, how well Tactical plays, just the new evolution of that squad, how Ablaze Olive can, uh, you know, basically forms on that team. And we only just recently started seeing Kenby on pro stage. So I want to see, like, he says confidence. He wants to find confidence on stage. So I want to see that. Looking forward to it. We got 100 Thieves versus Cloud9 up first. We're going to be breaking down that matchup right after this. What am I most excited about? Cloud9, the most dominant team in the LCS, have won! I'm winning. I'm most excited to just get back into the grind again. It's been a long four to five months. I feel like there were just so many roster shuffles, and I think a lot of the rosters look like pretty good on paper. A nice throw into the wall! The multi starts coming through! I'm just really excited to be on an underdog team again. EG, take down TL! Not meeting that expectation was like really tough. I'm excited to play versus all these hype super teams coming in. Being reunited with Double F is, is really fun. The only thing that I really care about is that if I still have what it takes to win. Playing with three new players and my old teammate, Six Eight. So I'm just really excited how that will turn out. When they find the kill, Poppy tackles in! A double knockup! Three kills for Golden Guardian! I mean, I'm just excited to play with my team. Just want to just win everything. Core JJ is going to play around the stun. Going to pull him in. That's going to be an old combo. You are always excited to show your Pokemon to everybody. I'm excited to smash everyone. Like, there's a lot of teams that have some hype around them. Maybe some players that are coming in that people are hyping up and 
just want to remind them that we're still here. Welcome back to LCS Opening Day presented by MasterCard. Also, C9 versus 100 Thieves up first. Please spam Twitch chat with C9 or 100 Thieves. We'll be checking in on that vote at the end of this segment. And the four of us have all picked something that is the most interesting to us about this matchup. And for me, it was the path that these teams took in 2022. Because if you look cumulatively at how 100 Thieves did in the split, they were third in spring split regular season standings and second in summer spring split or summer regular season standings, but they were 0 and 6 in finals. So second place twice without winning a game. You look at Cloud9, on the other hand, they were second place in regular season spring, flamed out in playoffs. They had a really struggling summer split, but ultimately they did lift the trophy and go 3 and 0 in their finals. So if you looked at a cumulative win loss between the two teams, 100 Thieves would probably be higher, but the emotional difference of 100 Thieves wanting to blow everything up because they didn't win a single finals game, they actually only return closer to their roster, switch out all other four members of the team, change coaching staff, change DM, really an entire rebuild for 100 Thieves. Whereas you look at what happened with Cloud9, and they've only made the one change in the mid lane, Jensen departing the team and Diplex joining. So for me, that's the most interesting thing is just how these two organizations evaluated their success in 2022 because 100 Thieves, for all purposes, was extremely close to getting over the hump and becoming an LCS champion once again, but they decided to blow everything up. Raz, what was most interesting for you? Oh, the elephant in the room. Because if we're talking about making it back to the finals and winning a championship, why not just talk about the two players that have done that the most historically in the LCS? And it's about that experiences, the championships. That's three championships that they were able to have together, eight separately when they're on their own different paths. And so if we go back into the experience that, you know, the, the quote unquote experience that people tend to talk about, uh, it's about the different teammates that you're with, the different metas that you're in, the, the stiffer competition, yet you're still able to remain at the top. The five first team all pros for double lift, six all together that he's able to be there. The back to back to back to back championship that he was able to have with uh, Team Liquid, that first championship that he was able to get uh, in Madison Square Garden, all of those memories, all of those challenges he was able to overcome in those different times and experiences. And then you look at this. Insane. And if we're talking about top in your position, that's 12 all pros there for Bjergsen, uh, four MVPs. He was able to remain at the top of the league. And their last championship, the one that they ended up having together, the two players that they had were rookies, were young players in Spica and Broken Blade. And so they were able to teach and show some of their experiences during scrims and throughout that journey in winning a championship and learn from really talented guys in Broken Blade and Spica to basically get that last chip. And they wanted to do it again. Emily, I heard you heard, had something to say about the new players that they have right now. Yeah, so I'm glad you covered the veterans, right? We have three new players in this match here, as already covered. I'm first going to look at Tenacity and Busio because I think the 100 Thieves ecosystem over the past few years is super interesting. When 100 Next was announced in Amateur, I think a lot of people were really waiting to see, okay, where is the payoff going to be coming from having an amateur team, then an academy team, then an LCS team? And both of these players have made their way from 100 Next to 100 Thieves Academy and now are going to be on the 100 Thieves starting roster for 2023. I'm going to start with Tenacity first just because we actually have technically seen him in one LCS starting game. It was during lock-in, last split. Uh, unfortunately, it was a loss on the Kennen. I think the big thing to know about Tenacity is that he is definitely more of a carry player, in my opinion. Um, he was technically on the starting roster for spring. And then when Sunday was doing so well, he went back down to Academy, still was doing really, really well in Academy. Um, I know him as more of a carry player and someone who does get a lot of resources or did back in Academy. However, I do think as much as his Orn has been memed uh, all on the Academy broadcast and even on our broadcast and we were introducing him, he has become more well-rounded uh, while he's been down there, especially 
during last year. And then Busio, who was highlighted in one of our features going into LCS, but kind of has been watching for a really long time and is now coming out on the LCS stage. He was hyped up as the most valuable prospect of summer 2022 in the Academy system. He's a lot more well known for his engaged supports in my opinion, but I also think that's just because we only much more recently got into a more Enchanter support meta. So I'm really curious to see in particular how he partners up with Doublelift, who has raised a lot of supports alongside him in all of those championships that Raz hit on earlier. And then Diplex is a German mid laner who's coming over from the LFL. Um, I actually talked to Lore a bit about his performance over there because uh, she said that he was like really, really hyped and He's been super strong last year on Vitality B. He actually had the highest KDA of any player in the LFL for that season in summer. Um, however, there's still this kind of sense of untapped potential with him. And I know in looking at the video C9 put out when they were discussing how he's gonna be on this team, where he fits, that also came up too, right? That there's a hidden level that we haven't seen and in the structure that C9 has, he'll be able to fit in and do really well with the pre-existing team. Also, there's just a super fun meme going around where he looks like Jensen and Sneaky put together, so obviously he'd be on C9. <laughs> um, and now over to Mark. I'm really curious to see what you have for this matchup. Yeah, what do you got, Mark? Uh, I didn't do the assignment. <laughs> Uh, oh, improvise. Okay. Uh, twist, I run, run, the, run the lane minion. That's what I did. Look, I, I predicted who was going to ask chat. Uh, and they believe in 100 Thieves. Oh, oh, okay. Fisher sure Jat at no. chat. <laughs> well, yeah. I reported the findings. Okay. All right. Well done. I mean, that's interesting. I, I would consider Cloud9 the favorite here. Yeah, I would consider I feel same. like they're slept on a lot. Yeah. Hmm. Well, it's, it's interesting because I think... For a lot of the experts, the feeling for 100 Thieves is that they have a lot of things to ramp up into. Double is yeah. coming out of, uh, you know, the time off that he had when he was just streaming and playing solo queue and stuff. The two rookies going into the LCS, how they're going to perform, uh, and the fact that there's so many new players together there, it does feel like a team that will get better over time and not come out the gate immediately hot. 100%. I, I think that's where we all agree that that ramp up is there. And I think the positive is that they went early to Korea, started practicing pretty consistently. And so I felt <laughs> like they understood that they needed to cover a lot. Very similar to Bjergsen when he first came back on a Team Liquid actually after mm. his hiatus and working as a coach. There's gonna be a ramp up time, but I, it felt like they attacked it pretty early. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, Emily, when you were doing the three young players, it got me thinking who is probably feeling the most pressure Ooh. in this game, mm. right? And it might weirdly be double if for me, oh, right? Because Tenacity and Busio were actually playing competitive League of Legends in 2022. Double if is coming from like over a year hiatus. The expectations are super high. I He's still think Cloud9 should be a stream yeah. to a lot of the pros. Yeah, I do wonder <laughs> like how much it is actually riding on this first game because I think there's another element with this 100 Thieves team where they're trying to win over fans more mm -hmm. than they were last year because something that, I think all of us noticed when they were in both finals last year is in the EG final in spring, EG was the crowd favorite. And then against Cloud9, Cloud9 was the crowd favorite. But now I feel like, especially by the fan vote, they are the crowd favorite. And I think there's a level of pressure in trying to maintain that momentum and be a popular team. I think that's fair, especially on the idea of thinking that Doublelift would have the most pressure. I always felt like throughout his career that he's never really cared about the pressure. Mm -hmm. I would maybe even go towards Busio as a player that has a mm. lot of hype. And I think generally speaking, whenever a player comes from Academy and performs excellently, a lot of people will really push on hype, maybe undeservingly, because once you go into the LCS, there's going to be a much higher level. It actually quite reminded me of the opponents that they're going up against in Fudge. Fudge ended up turning into an amazing top player. Yeah. But in the first few months, he needed to work on that. Yeah. I was going to say, I think all three of the new players have the most pressure on them. Yeah. Like Tenacity and Busio on both teams, just because... Uh, in particular, I don't think a lot of people know uh, a lot about Diplex or like his strengths and weaknesses. And then with Tenacity and Busio, they Ooh. have been hyped a lot coming in from Academy. And the community can be really merciless. We're in terms split. Of, yeah, wow. Well, <laughs> good job. Good job. I'm, so, I I'm thought, going Cloud9. I, I, I thought we were going to be a sweep Cloud9. I well, thought the split. same thing. I went 100 Thieves yeah. because I think they uh, did attack it quite early. All right, well, I'm happy that we have a 50-50 matchup to start off the day, and that's going to be do it here from the Analyst Zone. Let's send it out to the stage.
team in the LCS have won. To the champion's floor. Yes, I'll go my way. My shoes got so gotta strut in my walk now. Got a pocket for the sun. Don't say it's gonna go down. I'm the way I can feel it in the city, yeah. Happy when I breathe it in it. Well the dice for the seven hit eleven, hit a seven, hit eleven again. Non-stop service to the top floor. Got a falling globe! Yeah. 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 Summer Finals in Chicago. 137 days since this team walked into the United Center and walked out as champions. We've been waiting more than four months to welcome them back into this arena to celebrate that championship. And now that wait is over. Please welcome your Summer 2022 LCS champions, Crowd9! In the top lane, he's part of any balanced diet, it's Fudge! In the jungle, everybody's favorite crustacean connoisseur, we got Blabber! Over in mid, a brand new face to a storied organization, it's Diplex! Bottom lane's got the big guns, Berserker! And on support, the Roll Swap King, it's Finn! Facing them on the other side of the rift, it's the team they beat in those summer finals, but with a brand new twist. Introducing 100 Thieves. In the top lane, he's out of Academy Jail and he's ready to rock and roll in the rift. It's tenacity. In the jungle, the king himself, Crawl Closer. In the mid lane, the North American go to the solo experience, it's Bjergsen. Bottom lane, sees the return of another goat himself. Co-streams be damned, double lift 
gets back in the LCS. And on support, he swapped from mid to bottom lane. He has dominated the amateur and academy scene, and now he's ready to rock and roll here in the LCS. It's Bocio! LCS 2023 season starts right now! Monica, Kobe, it is good to see you again, buddy. It's great to be back. Our stage is so clean now, and we made some changes as well. Casters, lazy. we're actually in the stands with the fans. I can get yeah, high yeah. fives, high five directly high five. to the fans right now. It's, it's actually awesome. I can't wait for the games to actually start. We've had so many, uh, you know, roster changes as well. With uh, especially, you know. Big news right off the top, Double Lift is coming back. He's on stage again. I could see the emotion, you know, just building up there. Not just Double Lift being back, Double Lift reunited with Bjergsen for the first time since TSM. Over on the other side, we got the returning champs coming back with four out of five of the same roster. This first game, my friend, I hope it sets the pace for the entire day. I certainly hope so as well. And what a rematch of the finals it will be. You know, Cloud9 kind of demolishing 100 Thieves so much so that this 100 Thieves organization, and Jack touched on it on the analyst desk, they were in back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back finals. Yeah. And second place was just not good enough for them. So they decided to blow it up and get the GOATs back, plus promoting Academy players. We finally get to see Tenacity get some play time. You know, basically all last year, sitting behind someday, didn't get to play any of the LCS stage games, just that lock-in tournament game. But Busio as well, he won the award for uh, most uh, valuable prospect <laughs> looking towards these Academy players being promoted up into the LCS. So definitely exciting changes on that side, uh, as well as Cloud9 coming back to build and improve upon what they already had. Yeah, and one big thing, letting you guys know, we are on patch 13.1 for the games here today. I right. know there's been Not a lot fix. of conversation <laughs> recently about the 13.1B update. Yumi losing her kneecaps and changes to Infinity Edge, things Woo! like that. Those aren't happening here for the first week. For the first week, we will be on 13.1 just to set the expectations there with that. But I really want to see both these teams come out with a little yeah. bit of swagger. You know, I want to see them prove something here, start off strong. Because as we've seen in so many previous splits of the LCS, Sometimes it's these early matches against the other top competitors that can make a big difference later on. Yeah, and and talking to a lot of the teams during the during the off season while they're all practicing, you know, a bunch of these teams went and boot camped in Korea, then came back here. They they've had a change to their practice schedule league wide, uh, changing up the scrim block schedule as well. And they've been talking about how scrims right now the meta is pretty similar to what you're seeing in LCK, but yeah. played way faster. Similar That's champions, what I see. but way faster gameplay. So I'm very excited to see if that translates onto stage because oftentimes, you know, scrims are almost always faster played than, uh, you know, stage games. And we'll see if it uh, actually comes out today. Well, fast games have a lot of kills, my friend. And here's a fun fact as we're still just getting ready to get into our first game of the day. Double Lift, returning to the stage, returning to the LCS here today, is currently two kills away from a lifetime total of 2,100. There are only two other players in the history of the LCS it's one Bjergsen. to have I, done that. <laughs> one of them is the man sitting right next to him in Bjergsen. The other is Wild Turtle. Uh. So Double Lift will join a pretty elite club if he hits that second kill today. So for everybody in the audience, when you're watching this, 
It's double lift, I guarantee you. There's going to be a two in the kill column eventually. Make sure you make some noise for it, because he's going to be breaking another one of them records. I can guarantee there will be noise, because I have already heard, I think, the same person screaming at the top of their lungs every time we see double lift. <laughs> right there, there we go. go. <laughs> the fans are glad to have him back, man. Especially. Uh, definitely excited to see to it. Uh, we talked a lot about the 100 Thieves, you know, changes that they made. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, me too. Work uh, <laughs> smarter, not harder. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> uh, Diplex right there. Uh, great cue time here from the camera person. Um, is the big change that Cloud9 made. You know, right. of, of course, there was, a, there was an outcry when they let go of Jensen, but... Um, you know, they were pretty open about it. Like, Jensen had a big price tag attached to him. And so they went over, uh, you know, and, and pulled out Diplex here from the LFL, and they've got high hopes for him. Uh, he has also been having pretty promising scrims with, with the roster. And I think one of the biggest things for Cloud9 is, of course, building upon what they had last year. Sven said specifically, I will not play support for any other AD carry than Berserker. So you yeah. better keep Berserker as AD carry or I'm out. And Berserker said the same thing. He will only play with Sven as support. So I feel like that bottom lane synergy is only going to continue to grow. And we're into champion select of the first game of the LCS in 2023. Let's get it, my friends. Cloud9 starting off banning away Fiora and Zillion. Bjergsen will always strike fear into hearts with that pocket pick. <laughs> Meanwhile, over on the other side, two bands I love to see after what we had to go through last year, buddy. Let me tell you what, I've had enough Zeri and Sivir for a lifetime. Fair enough. You only have to wait a little bit longer till we can get to that patch. Uh, AD Carry's taking a lot of bands here. I have to say something conspicuously missing is the Lucian. If you are going to give Double Lift his Lucian pocket pick in his first game back in the LCS, I think you had better had a very good answer ready for it. They feel like it's going to get first pick though, so 100 Thieves will ban it away themselves. Right, and the last pick on cloud Nine side was, or the last ban, excuse me, was the Rise, which according to the stats we have in front of us, across the major regions right now, is the only champion with 100% presence in pick yes, ban. Sir. So not surprised to see him taken off the table. It's first pick Ash for C9 and Jackson Varus for 100 Thieves. And Sven was on the support Ash uh, train way earlier than a lot of other players. We saw it at the end of last year uh, with the hover on high Heimerdinger, though, you're thinking that's probably a Berserker Ash and a Heimerdinger support form for one of those big pushing bottom lanes uh, that have really become the meta right now. Meanwhile, on the side of 100 Thieves with the Varus over there trying to do a similar thing, um, uh, you can actually go on hit or lethality depending on enemy team comp right now. Both yeah. builds are viable. So we'll see how the rest of it rounds out because Sante, a highly prized top laner, did sustain some nerfs, but still so, so high priority for the top lane into Tenacity's Jax. And we talked to Tenacity. It was really cool when we had uh, the kickoff tournament, and he talked about their scrims versus Cloud9 already. He said the only top laner that did beat him was Fudge. Yeah. And he's the one who had the confidence to blind pick this Jax. So we'll see if the if the Cassante is, is enough to deal with it. I know Cassante early definitely has a strong lane. I mean, even during the kickoff event, when we were talking to Tenacity saying, hey man, what's your top lane tier list? He's like, all right, well, it's me, me it's Fudge, Fudge <laughs> and then there's like a big gap, and there's like everybody else, I guess. He's also a little biased because he's very good friends with Fudge. Right, of course, of <laughs> course. But I like I like that buildup, you know? We've got mm -hmm. a Zier locked in here for the side of 100 Thieves and for Bjergsen specifically before we get into the second half of the bands. Elise will be the first one band here in second and half neither team having locked in a jungler means we're probably going to see some more bands towards that Sejuani banned out by C9. Yeah the jungle pool right now um, has been pretty stale I'm going to be honest <laughs> yeah. very very yeah. stale with uh, you know Wukong, Vi, Maokai all kind of floating around there um, and it's kind of interesting that we still don't have you know Maokai showing his face here in the bands or the picks already they opted to ban out the Elise the, the you're just er trying to jinx it huh the earlier game jungle thank you very much <laughs> I really wanted to see the Maokai ban of it. Uh, I uh, was able to get it into reality here. Um, but the Elise ban, they kind of talked a little bit about it on the desk as well. Very high win rate in solo queue right now. Very good at setting up power dives. If you have a Heimerdinger Ash lane, yeah. one of these premier pushing lanes, you get a big wave built up. You go dive the enemies on that wave. Uh, Elise is the best at facilitating that. Here we go, though. The Silas pick away here. It's one of Diplex's most played champions. Uh, so a little bit uh, of a steal away here as well. Yeah. And that's going to be either a, a uh, probably a uh, jungle Silas here or closer. 
definitely have a lot of faith in this guy. And with Silas locked in, Akali is a champion. We saw this so much during Worlds 2022. These champions always on opposite sides of the rift, often lined up against one another. And it's a very good counter pick into Azir. It does rely on confidence and going for kill threat, though. Yeah. So I like how Cloud9 are putting that uh, confidence into Diplex himself very early on. First stage game versus Bjergsen. They see the, the Azir, the blind pick, and he says, fine. We answer it with the Akali. It will go for that level six kill. See if they can get the burst damage. And I was talking to Emily Rand about it yesterday. Hold on now. With Viego locked in, we know this is a closer staple champion. Okay. So we've got Boost support. Bucio was a, Bucio was a mid laner. Azir. Bucio was a mid laner before switching game. to support. And he's going with the Azir. Now this did happen. I I'm trying I'm trying to remember the actual game. Uh, but it did happen already in professional play. Can't remember the exact game, but the Azir as one of the counters into Heimerdinger. Mm -hmm. People are always trying to come up with these counters now to Heimerdinger to deal with the turrets because it's so yeah. oppressive, these pushing bottom lanes. That's why we saw, you know, Jin support become a thing. Uh, similar, similar idea there with, with the Azir. Plus, you can go for these big all ins with the move back, with the Azir sweep. Let's see if it works here on stage, though. I love it. Really taking advantage of, of Bucio's history as a mid laner and trying to get a creative counter pick on stage. We get to have Kisante versus Jax in the top lane. We get a Kali Silas mid. We get closer Viego. We get support Azir and the Heimerdinger support on the other side. Game number one is looking good after draft, my friends. And C9 and 100 Thieves are ready to throw down. I am so excited. Game number one, even just the champion select is delivering flowers. Oh, yeah. I feel like it's going to be a good year. I've got a good feeling about this one, buddy. Once we get into game, I can't wait to see how they're going to play this. What I was saying before we saw the Viego locked in and the confirmation of the support is here <laughs> was I was talking to, to Emily Rand yesterday. And Emily, forgive me if I, if I misquote anything here, but she was talking to me about Diplex and how this guy likes to play roaming champions. He's not going to sit in mid and win through just building a lane advantage. He's going to move around. He's going to help his team. Having a champion like Akali with such incredible mobility and ability to affect those side lanes, move around, make things happen, try to make some plays once you hit six, I think it's a good sign for these guys and how they want to start things off. We're onto the rift. It's 45 seconds in, and we're just seeing a couple of hot shots go back and forth. All right, level one, baby. Ward already over on blue buff here to try and find out the starting location for Blabber. Blabber always fallen. likes to go for full clears if possible on any other champion besides like Elise or Lee Sin. So let's see if he goes towards a topside start and then does, does end up trying to support this bottom lane with right. this new factor of the Azir support coming in, attempted counter. I can't believe we got Azir support in game number one, man. This is uh, this is gonna be a good time. We got Sven and Berserker with the control over the brush here, getting that forward positioning with the turrets. Double lift and Busio can just step up and start trying to clear those out. There's some of those Azir soldiers doing the work on them. Turret can't put up a whole lot of a fight right now. But man, ever since Worlds, ever since Barrel popularized this and showed everybody how it works, Heimerdinger support has been a menace in the bottom lane. Truly has. Truly has. Going to absorb some nerfs as well because of it. Uh, top side here, we talked up Tenacity versus Fudge, this friendship of top laners. Yeah. Uh, some of the closest, I feel like, uh, of any of the two top laners that we have in the, in the league on a personal level. So excited to see them uh, with this blind pick Jax here early on from Tenacity. Uh, you know, Fudge here. See if he can get anything going early on with the Kisante. Not just blind pick jacks, but it's also the the mini rework jacks that has the update to everything, including his ability icons. They're not made in MS Paint anymore. <laughs> so he's he's new, he's shiny. Everybody's looking to get something going there. But uh, Kisante, you mentioned a little bit in Champion Select, he's endured some nerfs because he's very, very powerful. So I'm excited to see how Fudge plays him. Closer's going to invade here early. Blabber's still at his own red. Closer should find him before this is cleared out. Blabber here pulling the buff away from the brush because they do expect it. Oh! Nice! Closer still, but again, with the burst damage there, nice little bit of timing. Super, super close. He's not done either. Blabber's going to grab the big chicken. Dashes over the wall there. Wukong's mobility keeping him away from any further aggression from Closer, but Closer can at least pick up a couple of these smaller chickens, steal some of that golden EXP away, and he's not done yet. He's still hanging around here. Yeah, coming in with the red buff, gonna fight Blabber. 
See if he can catch him once again. Mist is going to allow him to have a bit of bonus move speed, but he already used the Spectral Maw, so without the stun, he can't stick to him. And, and this has a, a two-fold effect here for Closer. When you go and you invade the enemy jungler like this, you take away Cloud9's uh, red quadrant. It takes a lot of the power out of that heavy pushing lane. Berserker and Sven have to worry about, you know, Closer back around behind them, and they've been getting chunked out here. Doublelift and Busio, even though they're getting pushed in a little bit, do have a very small CS lead, as well as a little bit of a health lead. Doublelift and Busio just hanging out here, seeing if they can dare these guys to come a little bit closer. They know they got Closer nearby, but they've also got to be aware it's highly likely that Blabber was also near. I gotta point out that Doublelift still has three potions left as well. So that health lead will sustain for him very, very easily. You can see him keeping the minion waves on their side while the Cloud9 duo does have to go back. And I think that's one thing that so many people have been so curious about is what does Doublelift's form look like in these first couple of weeks, returning to the LCS? Obviously, he hasn't been completely away from League of Legends. He's been streaming, he's been playing, he's been co-streaming, but does he still got it? Is he still that top level? And that's something everybody's gonna be paying so much attention to, especially when you're on a champion like Varus that can have that skill expression with the snipes and with the plays. All right, we mentioned the early stages here for the Cassante. Blabber comes up to help Fudge, see if they can take out Tenacity. He's got the dog zone. Tenacity's ready to go. The helicopter has taken off, but will they force him back to the ground? Tenacity with a flash away and an out play. Blabber's nearly dead. Tenacity looking good here against the 2v1 die. Yeah, Fudge not able to charge up his Qs beforehand. A good flash from Tenacity got him out of danger. Blabber not quite out of danger yet. Closer doesn't go get a visual confirmation though. That was really well done from Tenacity there. Good use of the E, good use of the flash to be able to keep himself alive. Sven's pretty low here in bottom lane. Busio and Doublelift were both able to go back, heal up, return to lane, so they're feeling pretty strong in their current position. Sven with only 200 HP, yeah, he's got potions. That Heimerdinger is squishy if they can ever get on top of him. Doublelift's arrows will be the bane of his existence unless he's got those juke boots ready to go. Still 0-0, zero zero, five and a half minutes into the game. No objectives taken yet, but 100 Thieves have a very small gold lead for themselves, built off a farm. Most of that built in the jungle. You can see closer 38, now 40 farm compared to only the 18 of Black. Definitely doing a very good job with the aggressive invade looks. Of course, in preseason, they did Reduce damage you're going to do to enemy camps while you're invading, but doesn't matter at all if you're going for uh, the, the true damage smite as well. And he was able to get the combo off no problem, stealing away the red, taking away a decent amount. Closer Viego, of course, has that history, especially oh, yeah. in the finals. Oh, yeah. Accolades for him, and he is he is the piece that 100 Thieves decided to keep this year when they're making so many drastic changes. You know, putting faith in bringing back Double Lift and Gerson, combining them, and Closer back out on the map wants to make an early move. Here we go. Spectral Maul is going to find the target. Diplex goes out, goes back in. E1, E2 takes Closer to about 60% there, but doesn't want to try to fully commit to anything, just backs away. Diplex does not want to lose a bunch of HP immediately after just recently teleporting back to lane. Worth pointing out as well, since you mentioned about the jungle changes, both junglers are using the green pet this time around. So I don't know what he's actually named. I just call him Bulbasaur. But they're going to be getting the shield. They'll be it's getting a, the tenacity it's bonus. Something, it's close to Moss Stomper, something like Moss, that. I think that's actually what it is. That yeah. sounds right now that you're saying it out loud. If it's not right, you it, did a good job. It might not be the whole thing. <laughs> well, either way, that's the one they're going to be using. I expect to see a lot of it in pro play. Fudge and tenacity. Straighten back a little bit here. Fudge knocks him into the turret. Takes him low. Jumps right back in. Fudge going for the solo kill. He flashes. Oh! Tenacity tries to spin. Blood of the LCS in 2023. Down to the last auto, baby. I was looking for something early out of the Cassante, and Fudge does not disappoint. So close there. But Tenacity did not have his flash from the previous right. tower dive that Blabber was able to pull off there. Missing the flash there means that Fudge is able to convert and we get our first blood of the LCS. I love these skill expressive top lane matchups where you get to outplay the guy <laughs> and get those sorts of fancy maneuvers in there. Closer's back here in mid. Bjergsen has stolen away Diplex's Akali ultimate, so lots of burst available here around mid for either side as Bjergsen can now roam with Closer towards this top side river. The Scuttle Crab was just secured by Blabber, so he's at least got that to keep him safe as he farms up his own blue. Doesn't have to pass that off to Akali just yet. And you're gonna see Bjergsen right back in mid. Now let's take another look at how this fight started, because it was Fudge 
forcing tenacity under the turret. Yeah, so Kasante kind of plays like the third brother of Yasuo and Yone with the, with the Q charge ups. Yeah. Uh, and then you always want to use your ultimate after you've already taken some damage. Fudge got really good positioning there to get tenacity deep uh, towards his turret and then flashes over for the last one. The stun here, right when his Q goes off. So the timing there, still with the uh, stun from the Q from Fudge, able to buy him enough time to get that last bit of damage off. That was a nice arrow from Berserker hitting Busio. Unfortunately for Cloud9, it was not that effective because of the fact that Busio buffered the dash over the wall to be able to escape it. But if that had not been buffered, surely would have been a kill there. C9, however, with control over the top side river, they will pick up this first neutral objective of the game in the Rift Herald for themselves. The gold has equalized thanks to the first blood that Fudge earned. It's still double lift the most wealthy man in the game by a very, very small margin. And he's about to get more wealthy right now. He's, he's at the turret. I'm pretty sure he should be able to get a turret plate during this time. So the price of this Rift Herald is going to be more pushing power for double lift. Busio comes down, does share it with double lift, so they split the money a little bit here. Mm -hmm. Trying to get that Azir a little bit more uh, power. By the way, our, our stats person, at least, could not find the other uh, professional game. So we're going to claim, you know, first professional. We're, we're going <laughs> to claim it. Azir. Yeah, as far as, uh, as far as stats is concerned, uh, it, it, uh, it was just uh, other challenger game as it was coming out. And Busio is going to be able to rotate over for the Dragon as well. So Hunt we for Thieves with the bottom lane control here are able to also start stacking those dragons. And that's what I love to see. You recognize you've got the advantage of that massive pushing wave because they rotated their men top to try to take the Herald. Turn that into the plate. Turn that into the Drake. Make sure you're getting a punish there. So good stuff coming out of 100 Thieves. Still a dead even game here 10 minutes in. I'm curious where we're going to see the action and where it's going to come from. Because everybody's having ultimates come online now. We saw the Berserker arrow already get used. We saw the 1v1 in top. But I'm curious who's going to pull that trigger next. Yeah, it looks like Busio will go for like a Rylize uh, build here for the Azir as well to pro provide some more peel, some more slows. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like that a lot, right? It turns your little soldiers into a better zone control mechanism. And I want to see the, the CC possibilities with that bottom lane are ginormous you know with the uh, double lift on the varus can can do some setup here so we'll see if they go for a big all-in play on the bottom side once busio gets level six as well closer was getting pressured here a little bit by diplex around those chickens meanwhile top side you can see blabber looking for maybe another chance at a dive on tenacity but they walk away from it tenacity does have his flash back up and ready to go he'll have his teleport ready to bring him back to lane about 15 seconds from now you can see fudge has already gone back to base this teleports top are desynced and we'll keep an eye on whether or not that influences anything fudges should be back and ready by the time that we get to the next drake if they decide they want to fight for that but it's still not a very bloody Bloody game here early on. Double have continued to find some of those piercing arrows down in bottom, but they're pretty happy just trading the farm back. Yeah, just uh, just that first blood of the 1v1 on top side, which had pretty big ramifications. You know, Fudge being able to complete his Iceborne Gauntlet very early on mm -hmm. uh, is going to be a huge, huge power benefit. That thing giving so much armor, protecting against closer as well. Speaking of which, the Flex getting back away from the Viego. Bjergsen jumps in to add some extra damage, but. Diplex is still doing all right. The smoke does a great job at keeping him protected. Blabber's also got this Eye of the Herald in his inventory, so we will need to see Cloud9 try to use that one here soon. Berserker firing off an arrow. Bjergsen, calm, cool, and collected, steps away from it. It flies top, but it doesn't hit tenacity either. So C9 not going to find anything off of that second attempted shot here from their AD carry. I'll have to try to see how many of those he fires off, see what the accuracy rating looks like as the game moves forward. But Blaber only has about less than a minute, 45, 50 seconds to go on dropping that eye. We need to see it placed somewhere soon. Yeah, definitely want to get the turret plate gold value out of it as well as the already acquired kill gold. Under tower here with oh, the trade. Boy. Fudge has no fear, forcing the flash out of Tenacity underneath the turret. This is the power of Cassante. This champion has so much he can do. There's so many different ways you can utilize the kit. Well, if you're good at him, he feels ridiculous to play against. Yeah, the turning into a DPS champ with the ult here uh, right afterwards. Harold used on top side. Tower's going to go down. That's first tower gold as well for Cloud9. Racking up a lot of firsts in this game and a 1.6k yeah. gold lead. Closer's gonna walk up and make sure that Blabber just doesn't steal away this red buff for free. 
Blabber providing a distraction while the Herald attempts the second charge up in top lane, but will not be able to execute on that in time. Tenacity was able to leap to it and strike the eyeball. Ooh. Double O with the flash and the heal here to get out of range of that arrow. No summoner spells on the Varus now, but no damage dealt either. Important to remember, Varus is one of those champions that traditionally was always played with something protective. Braum, Tom Kench, something that would protect the fact that he does not have inbuilt defense mechanisms. Double lift with neither summoner spell and a support named Azir is going to be pretty vulnerable, and I expect Cloud9 to probably try to attack that soon. Yeah, I wonder if we'll see some more focus towards that bottom lane. Uh, with with double if also using his ultimates, we'll see about the cooldowns once those two come back up for him and Berserker. Dragon should align with that. With 45 seconds left on the timer. Mm -hmm. Well, we see the Eclipse in Double Lift's inventory, so you talked about how both builds are viable right now. He's looking at the enemy team. He's saying, all right, we want to go for the poke. We want to be able to chunk you guys out, find those big piercing arrows. I think it'll be telling if Cloud9 decides to bring Fudge down okay. uh, to try and force 100 Thieves off this dragon. Fudge already taking the top tower, and so he can push the wave in. If they call him down, he is the richest man in the game. He is the dangerous one that 100 Thieves have to worry about. Tenacity does have teleport, but still would be a dangerous fight, especially if Heimerdinger is able to set up the turrets and get in there first. Cloud9 moving in now. They make this power play with Fudge time worth it. They go in and clear out all this vision that 100 Thieves had set up. And these aren't just teleports. Remember, we're now past the 14 minute mark. The teleports are unleashed. They can show up at any time, anywhere, as long as there's a ward. But it doesn't look like 100 Thieves is ready to challenge for this. So Cloud9 will grab second Drake. They'll tie up that Drake count. And that means that we aren't going to be looking at an early soul win condition for 100 Thieves. So far, Cloud9 with a very good game plan, utilizing this counter pick. Uh, when Tenacity blind picks this Jax, you know, Fudge, they gave him confidence to go for it. They got him the first blood. Blabber went there to burn the flash uh, with the tower dive and a lot of resources used. Now, though, they want to fight him off the Herald. They're ready to go. Fudge jumps in on his own. He's going to find the ulti onto Closer, looking to bring him to the rest of the team. But it's not going to work to find a kill. It will work to take the objective. But now Blabber needs to get out of town. Pops the ulti, making sure he's able to spin away. And Cloud9 honestly executes a beautiful heist against the Thieves. They get out in time. Does cost them the ultimates, but they're very happy with that. The objective acquired here, Rift Herald number two, also picked up for them. And they just continue to increase this gold lead. Fudge teleports right back out. And it was a little dicey there when Fudge jumped in, right? Because he did what you mentioned. You like to take some damage before you ult with Kisante because it does significantly reduce your maximum HP. So he chunked himself out, then took a lot of burst as he jumped in. He escaped with not a lot left in the tank, but the fact that he escaped is all that matters. C9, they were in a spot where they were going to trade neutral objectives just like earlier, but now they got a boat. And now what I'm looking at is some action from Diplex, the man on your screen right now, Akali. Level 11 has Sork Shoes and Proto Belt. This is a huge power spike for Akali. When you get that rank two ultimate and you got all the spell penetration from your boots, from your Proto Belt, see if he can make any sort of side lane play here because if you do not, Silas does start to outscale. You know, this is a Rod of Ages build Silas at that. You know, Bjergsen is, is very happy uh, if there are no kills for the Akali in the next few minutes. Uh, at his chances in this game. Already four stacks on that Rod of Ages, just gonna keep on gaining power. Yeah, the next six minutes specifically, because remember, this item now, compared to the old one of many years past, now there's that extra level. Once you hit the 10 stacks, it feels really strong. It was recently buffed because it wasn't feeling that great for a little bit, even after being reintroduced. So Bjergsen having this item scaling up here a little bit, sitting on zero, zero, and zero is fine. Honestly, 17 minutes into the game and only one kill is a lot slower in terms of PvP than what I was expecting. Yeah, we're, we're edging towards some very hype team fights. Yeah. Uh, I, I feel like with this setup. Also, the question of the split push uh, will remain here with Tenacity now finally got his one item um, with his Sunder finish, does have his flash and his teleport ready. So that teleport advantage that you kept on bringing up mm -hmm. has returned 400 Thieves. See if they can actually make use of it. But right now, Tenacity's got a Sunder and a Longsword. Fudge has his completed Gauntlet along with his completed Sunfire Cape. This Cassante just feels like the X factor in the game as wherever he goes, 100 Thieves are going to have to have a good answer for it or they're gonna end up suffering a whole lot. Fudge jumps into two. 
ready to go up against Closer and Busio. Let's see if he can find a little bit more here. A lot of damage comes out. Fudge goes in. Closer has to run. Double lift under pressure. And Blaver just beats him to death. Welcome back to the LCS. And C9 takes the turret in mid to go with. Now Busio falls to Fudge. And the push continues as 100 Thieves crumble in mid lane. Fudge low. Has to flash. Don't matter. Tenacity gets oh. Thieves on the board. <laughs> the tower there for 100 Thieves doing a lot. Almost. Able to get them too, and then had to flash out as well. A little bit of money back, a little bit of hope back there for 100 Thieves at the end of what was a dominating minute here for Cloud9 as they just pushed and shoved 100 Thieves across the map. Berserker set him up, Blabber knocked him down to get that kill onto Double Lift. No summer spells for him once again, and another tower taken by Cloud9. They just continue to increase their control on this game. And the way Fudge was able to jump into Closer and Busio and just say, I don't care about either of you. I'm going to smack you both around until I can get to where I need to go look for this huh? kill. It's scary to deal with, man. I'm trying to figure out what the answer is. But when you see plays like these, it gets tough. Yeah, he's so, so tanky. He's taking almost no damage, even with this you know, support uh, Azir is hitting him while he's fighting Closer. And then once Tenacity comes over, he just uh, jumps his way out. Blabber gets the kill. This is where they get a little bit over aggressive. Yeah. Fudge might have to worry about tower damage. Oh boy. Uh, uh, double lift. You might want to get out of there, buddy. All right, all right. He's good for now. He's good for now. He survives. The sun disc from Busio is going to keep him protected. But C9 is focusing on this no summoner's Varus. And the split push here for Tenacity starting to gain some power. The Jax thwack. <laughs> In full action here. Some solo tower gold on an outer tower here, side lane. Much needed for him, much needed 400 Thieves to try and close this gap. Level 13, also very important for Jax. Remember, you max his empower first for your DPS potential, but level 13 is where you're gonna max out that counter strike as well, making it so he's much more survivable in extended trades in team fights. So Tenacity, He's getting closer and closer to being able to match that pressure that Fudge can bring to the table. But unfortunately for the Thieves, they're still down 3,000 gold. And it means they don't want to take a fight in open ground. They don't want to fight on fair terms, which means surrendering the Dragon over to Cloud9 and to Blabber. Fudge trying to defend the blue buff against Closer, but smite is smite, not really going to happen. And Closer can walk it off. Rod of Ages tracking going well. Seven stacks here for Bjergsen. Close to stack number eight as well to try and get that big payoff of the level. You jinxed it. It can only stack when the clock moves, and now the <laughs> clock doesn't move. Well, Bjergsen is uh, the lord of time uh, with all they the They did ban the zillion. zillion. They did ban the zillion. See if, uh, see if we can pull out some old tricks. We will let you guys know whenever we find out exactly what the pause is about. But I, hey, I, I will laugh time. so hard if it is a mouse issue because Travis Gafford is here in the audience. He took a picture yeah. of Double Lift looking at his mouse. There are oh, yeah, really our pauses. All right, blink of an eye, baby. We did not have go. an issue. It doesn't matter. Everybody forget that that was there because we're right back into the game. Drake was just taken by the side of Cloud9, so they got a two to one lead on those. Bjergsen grabbing a turret in bottom lane for 100 Thieves, very important to lower this gold difference. Lucio again, doing a good job, utilizing his ears dash to buffer away. Double is not gonna be able to buffer that one, but he will be protected by his team, and 100 Thieves gets the punish back with Vendette. C9 are gonna try to find one in trade, and they'll take Closer down. It's Diplex into the back. He's already found Devil Lift, and he might be able to find Busio too. Tenacity is not looking very tenacious right now, and Berserker goes Berserk as 100 Thieves are getting cut down. Bjergsen. Bjergsen wants to be the hero, but C9 reduces him to zero. It is an ace for C9, and the last kill goes to Diplex. Fudge just living on slivers of HP there. Diplex absolutely deleting double lift there in the back as well with the Akali. Let's take another look at the initiation. Now, you can see what they're thinking. They're going for double lift again. They're saying Varus with no summoner spells, prime target. So they hit him with the arrow. Sven was going in to follow up on the arrow, but all of 100 Thieves peel for double lift. Busio with the ultimate here from Azir pushes back Lab or pushes back the Wukong. Closer went in though, so exposed himself as a kill target. And then Diplex absolutely immediately deletes Double Lift, zoning out the back lane while Fudge just works straight through the front line. This Cassante murdering them. And as he goes right up, even with the Ignite on him, 
The chains here from Bjergs and Silas do get blocked up. Yeah. Uh, so they save Fudge, and he's not able to take down Fudge, even with the stolen Akali ultimate. So he survives there as well. No Baron taken in the aftermath, though. So it's just the extra gold thus far for Cloud9. <laughs> You, you, ever like build, uh, you ever build all tank items and then just have casual 4,300 damage in a team fight at 21 minutes into the game? It's kind of cool to be able to swap the tank items into DPS <laughs> when you hold, yes? My health gives me damage. Definitely a sick fantasy for Fudge to be living right now. Fudge is living the dream. And he is uh, going with the Gargoyle Stoneplate third as well, so it can get, give him that really big shield uh, with the active. If you have good timing with that, um, as well is super, super potent. Uh, as we saw in the last one, you're living on slivers of HP. And I think that's the important thing about it compared to other items like Sterex, like Maw. Hold on, Double Up goes in, Flash engaged, but Berserker's got a fast enough reaction time to get away from it. Tenacity eats the arrow, and now Blabber's coming right on back, baby, let it rip! Tenacity's gone! 100 Thieves are on the run, and Cloud Nines we're gonna find a little bit more. It looks like the Thieves have put enough distance between themselves and their opponents, but it's another fight that goes C9's way as 100 has to retreat back into their own jungle. Fudge is going to keep leading the charge. He'll keep looking to try to pressure these guys, keep them away. C9 starting up the Baron now, and it looks like 100 Thieves are now Lord. dared to stop it. You cannot just let them have the Baron if you're already down 5k, but you got to get through this wall of Fudge if you want to get in. He's just playing the back side of the pit, keeping them all zoned. Bjergsen coming back around from the side here. Bjergsen's gonna be jumped on. Bjergsen's gonna be dumped on. C9! Get the mid laner to pick up the support. And Closer and Double have gotta go back home and tell their families. And that's definitely gonna be a C9 Baron unless Double if comes through with a God Arrow Steel. Varus Ultimate. Varus, yeah. Varus Q. I don't know if this is gonna be like. Double is gonna have to have some World Finals Varus Qs to steal this one away. Can he, he get in do range? It? Can he get in range? Diplex trying to zone him out. Yeah, nice. It looks like they're gonna get a shutdown here. That's a big one, taking out the enemy mid laner. Now, can they use this? Oh, oh to get it done. Fudge knocks him right back into the pit. It's low, it's stolen. Troll Closer. He somehow does it again and again and again. Closer gets inside, he steals the Baron, but all the thieves are down. Cloud9 wiped them off the map. See about the respawn there from Busio and Bjergsen. If the overlap gave them a Baron, Busio respawned quick enough. He yeah. has a Baron buff. They've got one to work with, but a 5,000 gold deficit they're staring down. Let's take another look at it here in the replay. Last half of the fight, at least. All right, so Double is able to hit him with the Varus ultimate here. They take down the Akali in the Shroud. They know where he is because he got rooted by the ultimate. Then there's a bunch of pressure on Baron immediately. Closer, ults in, unstoppable. Fudge tries to go for him, takes him out, and the Ash Arrow is shot at him. So you know, Cloud9 are like doing everything they can to keep Closer out, and it's not enough. He nope. just flashes back in, in time, and still gets it. Closer you know, keeps pulling out these magnificent plays for 100 Thieves, showing why he is the one player they did keep, but still not gonna be enough as Cloud9 take them down. Right, I know all three guys died there, and yeah, that sucks when three of your guys die. But if they gave over Baron, I actually think the game's over. Closer just saved it for 100. Their backs are still against the wall. It's still an uphill climb, but it is still Climbable. You've got Blade of the Ruined King, Divine Sun. We're working on the third item here for Tenacity. 1v1 up in the top side. Bjergsen versus Diplex. Meanwhile, bottom the 4v4 takes closer low. Stunned up underneath the turret. C9 disengaging for now. Back up in top. Bjergsen and Diplex both backing away. Silas versus Akali. That skill matchup. And it looks like they're going to settle on a draw. Yeah, there is a stopwatch in inventory for Diplex right now. And, and Bjergsen looks like he used his Zonias. C9, despite this Baron buff on Busio, trying to buff up the minions and defend the tower. Cloud9 still just through force, push it down. Baron buffs the minions, but not the turrets, sadly, for 100 Thieves. That thing's gonna crumble. It's a five to two turret count for C9. Three to one in Drake's, 6.3 thousand gold lead. The clock is ticking ever forward against 100 Thieves, and they're gonna need a big moment soon before the Cloud9 War Machine becomes unstoppable. And sh shouts out to Berserker, too. I mean, He's got the interesting build with the, with the mandate, uh, with the ravenous ultimate bravery. <laughs> um, plus, he has zero deaths. 
He is the only player in the game not to die, and he has hit many key Ash arrows here, setting stuff up for Cloud9. So uh, lots of good stuff already for C9 coming out of their bottom lane that wanted so much to play together again for another season. And the thing that I'm worried about, if I'm 100 Thieves, I'm looking at those inventories. I see Stopwatch, Stopwatch, Zonia's just now completed for Diplex as well. That means a lot of ability for outplays and ability to prevent kills that could otherwise bring you back into the game. So what I'm thinking is 100 Thieves either have to find an immaculate pick from a max range Chains of Corruption or something like that, or they just gotta get the perfect synergy with Azir swooping everybody in as Bjergsen steals an Akali ult into five. Yeah, I mean, they could try and look for a trailing split push play as well. That's one of my favorites, especially when, when you're down and the enemy team is trying to use multiple lanes. If you send both your solo laners, the Jax as well as the Silas into one, you 2v1 the enemy solo and then use one of your teleports to get back to your team so you don't give anything up. That could be a possibility, but this one looks like it's gonna be a Cloud9 2v1 as Diplex joins Fudge. Tenacity's trying, trying to get the better of him here in the duel, but Diplex says, nah, man, it's a team game. Puts a shuriken in his back, and now with another TP showing up, Bjergsen might find himself in a compromised spot, but he's got backup too. Closer arrives, but the Gargoyle stone play keeps Fudge alive. He's able to outplay it. He turns right back around and gets to the safety of his team. Closer and Bjergsen both still looking for it. There's that stopwatch, and Fudge baits them all in. Does it matter how many thieves there are, Flowers? Fudge is gonna style on them all, my goodness. Kiting out there, using that uh, Cassante Omni Vamp that you get with your ultimate to its maximum effect here as he's kiting backwards, baits them in. He had both the Gargoyle and a stopwatch. Come on, actually styling on them. Another one. C9, they've got so much of a lead now that they're just hard forcing against 100 Thieves. The reigning LCS champs going back up against the squad they beat to earn the title, and they're doing the same thing now they did back then. C9 take down the first inhibitor in bottom lane. They'll grab the second inhib turret, but with 100 Thieves just about to have Bjergsen respawn, they don't want to stick around. Yes, they would still have five to four man advantage, but with Diplex low and a lot of resources spent in the previous fight, they don't want to risk a throw. They know that they're at the point of the game where if they don't do something stupid, it's in the bag. And they're all rich. They've got so much money. <laughs> and they're rich. <laughs> in their pockets. Everybody going back to complete items. Berserker tops off this beautiful build with a with a Kempa Chainsaw form as well. He's doing so much for the team. What a team oh, yeah. player here. This is a utility team player build uh, from oh. him. So much though, Fudge. Fudge just leads the way. Initially, it looked like, oh no, he's face checking into four, but it's 100 Thieves who have to turn around and run now. You're gonna see Bjergsen's spell shield there from the Banshee's Veil blocking Berserker's arrow, but the rest of the team is still ready to follow it up. Diplex goes on the killing spree, Bjergsen goes down. Fusio is on the run. He'll try to escape from this one, but Sven doesn't want to let him get there. Fudge still chasing. He's run over the ultimate now, so he doesn't have that maximum level damage. Blabber's unstoppable, Closer's gone. And it looks like this just might be the end of the game. Double if I may have cursed you, my friend. I said, you know he's gonna get two kills some point in this game, but Double if's dead for 12 more seconds with only one kill. Busio and Tenacity will try to hold the line here with the Nexus turrets. Busio gets away to the safety of the fountain. Fudge at about 200 HP. Nexus turrets, one of them's down, the other one's still full. C9 not backing away yet. Double if comes up. He even tries to flash to get it, but Fudge has the answer. They keep him alive. Double if looking for another snipe. Finds Blabber, but ain't enough to kill him. He's got the Guardian Angel anyway, and C9 decides to call it. The game won't end here, but it's a five-digit gold lead. The Dragon Soul is up, and C9 is marching towards it. I heard rumors this offseason Cloud9 were smurfing their scrims. Looks like they've been Gonna smurf their stage games as well. 100 Thieves yeah, gonna buddy. throw everything at this dragon, though. Tenacity looking to come around from the side. Went for the counter strike. Now has to immediately disengage without that defensive tool available. Bjergsen coming back in. Banshee's Veil is gonna eat a lot of those rockets. Bjergsen's in the middle of everybody. Zonia's drops the aggro, but where's the rest of the thieves? Bjergsen goes in, Sven goes down. Now they're fighting Fudge. Now Devil's got the shutdown on Berserker and Fudge is having to get back away. A double kill back over to Blabber as they're fighting back. And Tenacity and Bjergsen try to survive. It's a 2v2. Fudge is low. Tenacity needs a little bit more damage as Blabber versus Bjergsen, but he won't be able to find it. Now they turn back on to Blabber. Quadra kill over to Blabber. Blabber tries to get the Penta. 
The shutdown. Back over to Bjergsen. You can see that one on your screen. Blabber versus Tenacity. Blabber can't win it. Tenacity gets him. Only top laners left alive. Fudge moving back forward. And the minions in the game. It's done. C9 gets the first win of LCS 2023. Welcome back to the LCS. <laughs> Welcome to the LCS Cassante as well. Fun yeah. absolutely smurfing with the Cassante. Double F did get his second kill. It was just during that final two minutes of madness that we didn't have time to acknowledge it. You told me, Kobe, at the start of this game, you said, I got a good feeling about this one. And that was truly a wild game to start us off with, all the way down to the minion ending. You can see the boys getting ready to take their first bow of the split. And if they keep playing like that, I'm sure there are many more to come. Cloud9 picking up where they left off. 100 Thieves changed a bunch of the players, but they can't change the result of the game. C9 at the top of the standings, number one. Things were pretty even for a long time. It was a low kill game early. They were trading the objectives early on. I think the first moment we really saw things start to swing heavily in C9's favor was the secret mission to steal the Rift Herald in top, where they got in, they stole it, they got away. After that, it just felt like this train was chugging along. Chugga, 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 and 100 Thieves was strapped to the tracks. Yeah, I think Blabber did a good job investing. Even though their gank, their tower dive did not work out, Burning the flash off Tenacity early, setting up Fudge to be yeah. able to actually get his solo kill, which was very, very close. That came down One auto. to just the last couple milliseconds of the stun time for that auto to get off, for Fudge to get that kill and then start snowballing and really pushing Cloud9 ahead. You know, whenever I hear rumors about scrims, I always take them with a grain of salt because oftentimes the results there are so much different than on stage. But if you're telling me that Cloud9 has been dominating in scrims and now they're playing like that, well, it seems like the scrim rumors may not be exaggerated at all. It's looking good so far. First stage game without a hitch. I love it. The new LCS stage, very clean. Looks like we're gonna get uh, Blabber. Riot Games Arena. Uh, they, uh. Told me, they told me it's Riot Games Arena now. We, it's not the LCS Arena, because it's big. Uh, and we're sharing. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're <laughs> team players. <laughs> oh, we might have uh, we got something special. We got team interview? Oh, little preview there. Um, honestly, super exciting game number one, though. You know, the support is here. Never, we never got to see the big moment. There was I never a, got the shuffle. There were a couple, you know, there was a good peel ultimate yeah. uh, to peel for the Varus when he had no summoner spells, but uh, didn't, didn't seem like it had that weighty impact. Yeah, I never got to see the big shuffle. That's what I was hoping for. He goes in like a torpedo, throws everybody back, and then the crew mops him up. But wow. it just felt like they fell too far behind. Yeah. Uh, 100 Thieves did start out with some pretty good uh, you know, control themselves, though, with Closer Close going invade. for the jungle invade, taking away this bottom side jungle pressure that you want to combine with your pushing Ashenheimer Dinger lane. Yeah. Um, but they were unable, of course, to deal with the fudge factor. Yeah, the, the top lane just ran amok with it. I mean, we saw 100 Thieves take that first Drake, take the three plates bottom when it was Cloud9 going top for the Herald. But then that Herald, hey, where's that go? That goes up there for fudge. Hey, remember the flash? That went up there to fudge. And uh, yeah, it was quite a top lane domination game for Fudge here in this kickoff of spring 2023. But now we're joining Cutie Cinderella, Fudge, and Blabber on stage for the Verizon post game interview. Yay! Thank you, Captain Flowers. Hello, everybody! Welcome back to the LCS. I hope you're excited to be here. I was really excited. I actually, I knew you guys were going to win, so I made, <laughs> I made you some cookies. Oh, um, oh lovely. Yeah, I. Uh, I knew you were... I feel like I don't want to do this interview anymore. Really? I just you can you can have them if Wait, you can want. Can I taste it? Yeah, you can you can take. It's they're just they I they're cuz you're going to beat them so you're going to eat 100 I'm, thieves. I'm That's good. A, I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. Not welcome bad. back to they're not bad? Not bad. You're not bad at League of Legends. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, welcome back to the LCS. How how does it feel back on the stage first day back? I was pretty nervous, honestly, because it was also a bit of an ego battle with me and Tenacity. We're pretty good friends, so yeah. uh, there was a lot on the line this Ooh, game, so I'm, okay. I'm glad I solo killed them, um, but Dang. I was very nervous. Uh, might have been the caffeine a little bit, but uh, yeah. 
my we were backstage. We were, we were talking. We were getting to know each other. You told me a lot about yourself. Uh, <laughs> I <laughs> oh, didn't say that much. much. No, said, I told you. Said, I told you about it. Fudge, tell us something about yourself that's special. And he says, "I'm tall." I did not say that. <laughs> Blaba said that. <laughs> Blaba said that. Not me. They're great. They're great um, team members. Obviously. Sorry. Most of my questions. Double lift Bjergsen. Uh, double lift. <laughs> oh. <laughs> shoot! 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 Just kidding. Uh, I know you guys were 12 games in a row in your scrims. You were winning. We were in the dressing room and you were talking about how there's no way you could win game number 13. Here, you've done it. How many? How long do you think this win streak is going to last? Uh, well, I think we're going to go 18-0 yeah. this yeah. split. Yeah. You know? uh, okay. It's not going to end. And then we'll, we'll just win the whole split, too. All right. We'll see what happens. I will say the power ranking of the fans, they have you at fifth. Do you have anything to say to the fans? Uh, they don't see our scrims. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, that's what I tell them, too, when they talk about me and bronze. I'm like, you just need to <laughs> you don't do my watch games. me play. You, know? you don't know what it's like down here. It's uh, hard. Um, it's hard. It's hard. Thank you. It is. It is. I agree. Uh, well, what team are you most afraid of going into this season? Um, probably Team Liquid, just because I think Summit is the best top laner other than me. Oh. Um, but other than that, I'm not really too worried. I feel like I've played against all the other top laners. Really? Uh, Armut, I guess, is a new player, but I don't think he's very good. Um, <laughs> oh my god. My bad. Sorry. It's it's bad, okay. Man. I say the same things about Tyler once, so <laughs> I get it. I get it. Flavor, what about you? Um, I think, honestly, I'm not afraid of any team. We haven't really scrimmed FlyQuest yet. They're avoiding us. Okay. So, okay. Um, <laughs> but be yeah, besides that, I think, you know, we're the best so okay FlyQuest is the fans number one pick so I think that's that's a good one to call out um who who do you think I think you might have an answer who do you think is the most overhyped player this season don't say it don't say it the crowd whispers <laughs> double lift oh! <laughs> how dare you I am not biased by the way I'm not biased but like I'm being honest Okay. All right. No, 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 no. I still think he's a good player. Okay. It's, just, it's really hard to live up to the hype of yeah. winning eight titles yeah. and then coming back for your first okay. split. Really, that's yeah. pretty impressive. I it is it's, impressive. He's impressive. It's hard, to, it's hard to match up to that hype. I think it's good. Uh, and what about, what about you? Uh, I agree with Fudge. <laughs> oh, my gosh! <laughs> Be original, man. Come on. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna send it back. We've had enough of you guys. I gotta I gotta get I gotta get you off the stage. I, I did have one more question before we toss it back. Would any of you um Would you guys be willing to maybe play on my account? Maybe do you? What do you? I cannot answer that question on stream. <laughs> All right, uh, I will. I'll send it. I'll send it back to Emily. Thank you guys so so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I honestly don't know how to follow that up with analysis, you know, uh, perhaps some account sharing going on over there. You want to try, uh, Emily? Yeah, all right, let's go. I want to talk about this draft because there were some cool things in it. I've been tracking a lot of pick bans across regions, like I said, um, and most specifically in the LCK, they kind of established this pattern where one, two, three picks on both sides would automatically handshake bot and jungle and so right off the bat we already see that both of these teams are not doing that whatsoever which was really interesting to me they both prioritize their top laners as fudge said in an interview and kind of in previewing tenacity these are two carry top laners so the jacks into Cassante is something that we've been seeing a lot but also the priority priority on it here uh, plays into both of their strengths and additionally reminds me a little bit more of some drafts i've seen over in the lpl prior to their lunar new year break um, now I'm going to kind of speed through this because obviously the other interesting thing here is that you're thinking that red side is picking their mid laner at three. We're going to flex Silas probably into the jungle position, which we had seen a little bit more so in solo queue and then a bit in the um, kickoff event. Uh, and I believe contracts played it in the LCS kickoff event specifically. But then here we lock in this Viego for closer, one of his staple champions and we see that the Heimerdinger, or the uh, Azir rather, is actually going to go into the support position 
into the Heimerdinger. And this, interestingly enough, I know Kobe, I think, hinted or alluded to it on cast, is that this is not the first time we've seen an Azir try to counter the Ash Heimerdinger push and specifically going into the Heimer. We saw it in Demacia Cup from Wink on IG. Unfortunately, he did lose both of those games. But I think you could see from the bot lane action, the way these kind of comps work, that they did end up like, you know, delivering on trying to get that push, trying to get bot prio. But obviously, none of that matters. 100 Thieves did not win. I was completely wrong in my prediction. So Raz is over here to talk about what actually happened in game. And why I was wrong too. It feels like this is the shame game. <laughs> yeah, Mark just we got brought this the segments nonsense here. So this is gonna lost. Exactly. So this is gonna be our Grubhub delivering the win and it goes to Berserker. And you know, amazing Ash game. So in the end for me, it was just how well he played and we'll look into the play afterwards. But order Grubhub now through January 31st using the code SPRINGLCS and you'll be eligible to redeem one of 2000 digital Hextech chests and keys. You'll also be entered to a shot to win that grand prize package featuring a real life Hextech chest filled with Grubhub prizes. And the prize that C9 ended up winning was gifted by this mandate uh, build this ability stacking, ability hay stacking that he, that is, that he was able to aim. This is the second time that I saw that he was able to get a perfect stun onto double lift in between the terrain because it was the earth terrain here. And that actually completely took double lift out of this fight. He was stuffed, uh, taken out because of course the Hu Wukong ended up getting him. He was assassinated by Diplex, double TP coming through. And my favorite game. Wow, wow. Amazing champion! Thank you, Fudge! Wow, I love this champion and his Intofos! Wow, okay, you know what? I hope we get to see more of that going into the next game. Golden Guardians versus Evil Geniuses. We might see even more amazing Cassante gameplay! Okay, see you guys later. Leave Fudge, you guys see that too? Did you guys see that too? That was so cool! That was amazing! Did you see his Intofos? Only one oink. Support down five. I said oink. For oink. Oink. oink louder. Oink, 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 <laughs> oink, 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 oink. <laughs> Good. Takes him low, jumps right back in. Fudge going for the solo kill. He flies. Oh! Audacity tries to spin, but Fudge gets the outplay. Fudge goes in, closer has to run, double up under pressure, and Blabber just beats him to death. Welcome back to the LCS. Tenacity is not looking very tenacious right now, and Berserker goes berserk as Hundred Thieves are getting cut down. Bjergsen, Bjergsen wants to be the hero, but C9 reduces him to zero. It is an eight. <laughs> Typical beginner's mm -hmm. mistake. Yes, yes, they all start from the outside. So, will we help him? What else? Here, try it with Red Bull. Red Bull gives you wings.